The Buffalo No Huddle brought to you by Genesee Community College and Ficarella's Pizzeria. Get your game time fix. Well, that wasn't the ending I was hoping for, but that is the NFL. That's, that's life with two really good teams slugging it out. Welcome to the Buffalo No Huddle. From the Batavia Daily News and Livingston County News, I'm Jimmy Jam from CJ Country. I host the morning show from 6 to 10. Along with me, Mark Tillery, the executive producer here of this show, and he also does all the cool creative stuff you see with the Batavia Daily News, video, audio, that type of stuff. But uh, let's talk about the Bills and Titans. Before we dive into the finer points of the game, from 10,000 feet, what was your thought coming away from that game? It's a tough way to lose. I like how you said dive into it because fourth and one, I think, was an amazing call. So Uh, my hat's off to McDermott on that one. I mean, the Titans were the more physical team. They were the more intimidating team. And it was just, it was going to be a dogfight to the end. And unfortunately, Tennessee came out on top. Well, here's the thing. My personality would have been, didn't mean I disagreed with the call because I really didn't. At the end of the day, I, I felt good after the game. I felt like this team did what they had to do. It just didn't work out. Um... I never want points off the board when you got a chance to tie. But when you look at it, what's what's the alternative? A 50-50 chance, you get the ball back in overtime. Tennessee's been running on you all night. Right. Or, or just, not even I say running, but in reality, ever since that long touchdown run that Derrick Henry had for 72 yards, after that he only had another 67. He was averaging 3.7 yards a carry. The Bills were clamping down on him. But here's what was happening is like, the secondary and linebackers for the Bills kept cheating up to stop Henry, and that's what left them open. There were some receptions that extended drives and kept the Titans in business. They kept scoring. So if you're McDermott, you're like, do I want to keep doing this, or do I win it now, have a 67% uh, 67% chance of converting? And, uh, you know, and, and Allen has made that more often than not, that short dive. He just has. Although... If I had it my way, he's six foot five. I want to send him over the top. I want him to reach over and extend himself. The way they were headhunting him earlier in the game, I was scared for that. But I, I get where you're coming from. I on didn't this. see the headhunting, really. You thought you were really doing that, though? I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just never saw that. They were headhunting him, you think? Oh, they were definitely headhunting. Right. They were th- that Tennessee defense were, were bullies out there. I'm gonna give them their credit. They were definitely an intimidating team. But when it comes down to it, I mean, you're setting up, and I hate to say it, if say Buffalo even scores at that point. You're setting up for another flipping Music City miracle. And the last thing I want to do is hear about that for the next one. What are the chances at work? They tried to do it once earlier the earlier in the game, and apparently somebody knows that a forward pass exists. Thank you, <laughs> officials. Thank you for that finally. It only oh. took that many years to get those findings right. Yeah, so there you go. But I mean, at the same point, I mean, you're talking and you're 100 percent correct. I didn't want to go into overtime against that team. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see the defense face that face that offense again because Tannehill is not the quarterback you think he is. Derrick Henry makes him look good because Henry not only played a hell of a game as a running back that night, with a little help from the officials, we'll we'll talk about that, but he also was an amazing decoy, which made Buffalo play up, and that's what cost Tannehill. Tannehill was a game manager, more so than like the quarterback that took over in the game. At the end of the day, I don't feel bad about Buffalo's effort. It's a not it, at all. It, there's a there's a there's a, conflu- a conflict of elements that go into what happens and why a team wins and loses the game. And there's a lot of things on there, tangibles you can control and tangibles you can't control. I can't feel bad about it because I think if those teams went out again and played today, Buffalo will probably end up winning. You know what I mean? It's like, absolutely. and uh, there's some things we could point to and we'll get into it a little bit. Um, we'll get into it a little bit more. Why don't we do player awards right now? And All then right. uh, then we're going to ask Alec Bra- Alex Braski here from the Batavia Daily News about his thoughts on the game. But uh, who was your MVP? Who was the guy who came away as your MVP? You know what? I really, really, really feel that Dawson Knox gave his all, especially with the razzle-dazzle plays. And, and who knew the end around was going to happen? The tight end around is what we're going to call with Dawson Knox. But with, several, with a broken hand. With a broken hand. With a broken freaking hand, he throws a two-point conversion. That's better than most quarterbacks in the Tua. That's better yeah. than most quarterbacks in the NFL. But with several receptions, 88 yards, and really being an X factor, I'm going to give it to Cole Beasley. He finally arrived on Monday night. He was a great weapon, and I, I talked about the, I talked about decoy a couple minutes ago. He was a great decoy for 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 the for Buffalo that night, and really got some players open. I wish we would have seen more touchdowns because we left a lot of points in the red zone. When you know, that is a thing, could have been sixes. That but, is a thing. It's like that's what this team's. One of the, this team's Achilles heels, along with two other I'm going to mention when we do our least valuable or at least our uh, better luck next time right. awards. Um, we, we you got to get sevens, not threes in this league. That's the thing. I'm with and that. The first couple times those field goals, you all of a sudden you turn those into sevens. That eight points is the difference. 
and then you're you're singing you're singing a different story. You know what I mean? Because well, I mean, the film bags are older shows. I, I'd rather see Tyler Bass and the extra point end of things and out there lined up to win the game for, for Buffalo because Buffalo has the offense yeah. and there shouldn't have been those points left out there because it gave Tennessee a chance to really really get a game plan together and just run Derrick Henry because our, our Buffalo's defense was tired. Our, uh, I, 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 have to, I have to say, uh, our receivers, Cole Beasley woke up. That was great. Uh, well, actually, he was back in the game, to be fair. I shouldn't say woke up because they went to 11 personnel this time. So he was back playing more, and they used him a lot. He had that, you know, they, it was he, a great game for Beasley. And, I was and Diggs had a good ride. game, too. Diggs had a good game. Diggs arrived, too. Diggs arrived, too. Uh, San, I mean, obviously, that play for Sanders got called back, which we yeah. were upset about. But for the most part, I think that the receiving core had a great game. It's just I wish, again, that they wouldn't have left those points in the red zone. Tommy Sweeney catching that touchdown. You know, last year COVID knocked him out and he didn't come back because it did something. I I, I don't remember whether it was heart or lungs or whatever that stuff, but long-term effects from the COVID, he had to stop playing football right. last year. He's back and he, and, he, and he came in and caught that touchdown. Filled in nice when, when Knox was out. So, I yeah. mean, you got to respect was that. It was great. How do you not appreciate the name Tommy Sweeney? I know. <laughs> Tommy Sweeney for the touchdown. That was You cool. know that Sweeney kid? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, all right, so my vote for most valuable player, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. Other than a couple misfires during the game, what more do you want him to do? Uh, you know, he passed for he passed for 300 plus yards, three touchdowns. Uh, he does everything you need him to do. I thought he called a really good game. I thought he was confident out there, and I felt like, despite the letdowns, which we'll get into during uh, the Better sure. Luck Next Time Awards, I, I think he persevered through that. It was it was a great effort by. Uh, by uh, Josh, for sure. Now um, Tennessee was in his in his kitchen all night too. They were they which, were all, and the fact that he turned that around into touchdowns and turned that around into opportunities. Uh, obviously, Josh Allen's a, a close second for me. That's why we're going to go with our better luck next time, which is not a nice way of saying least valuable. Uh, w w what's your choice? I love this kid. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I have I have had his back all year long, but with eight carries for twenty four yards and uh, two receptions for fifteen. And not a lost fumble, but a fumble. Zach Moss just didn't bring it to the Monday night <clears throat> not having lights a, like I thought he would. Not having a feature back that's a little bit better than the two we have right now is, is problematic for me. You do need it in this NFL. I Granted, we are pass-first offense, but we really need a great running back because imagine if we had somebody even marginally better. But some of that, again, is going to go back to my choice for better luck next time. We got, it. We got systemic problems in the interior of the offensive line. It's a two-parter. I'm going to give you a two-parter. I agree. Against Pittsburgh and against Tennessee. Teams that bring rush interior on the line and bring pressure cause the most problems. We got a problem on the interior line. They have not done their job this season offensively and defensive line. Do you realize out of the six games we've played so far, only two games we've gotten outside pressure rushing off the edge. Hughes right. has been good this season, but obviously he's getting up there in years. Rousseau didn't give us the push this week we were hoping for. But for the most part, this team lacks a superstar pass rusher. We don't have enough. Tannehill's the most sacked quarterback in the league. How do we not get to him the other night? I can't believe a team that that got beat by the Jets, we couldn't beat. Or Buffalo couldn't well, beat. Well, it, it's, it's a week-to-week -week league. And the it thing, is. And keep, it in is. Mind, keep in mind, how many players did Tennessee have on IR? Or not on IR, but injured. They had like 17 players that were out right. there in the Jets game. They were healthier, getting healthier as they came back to this game, playing at home. It, Sometimes things, you know. It was one of those weeks in the NFL. We saw the Chargers fall, and I, who expected yeah. them to fall? Because the I, I saw that. It made me mad. Somebody made that Jets comparison. I'm like, that was a different story a few weeks ago. There, They were right. really banged up. I mean, you I keep forgetting how injuries do affect these teams. and, and just it's, When it's that wholesale, it absolutely does. Right. So my, uh, my, my uh, uh, you know, better luck next time is like, look, we need a better pass rush, and we need better interior blocking. Because that's going to affect how Moss and Singletary do as well, too. you got to open holes for them. They can't just create holes. They're, Rousse not that, they're not big backs. Like Rousseau will be that player one day. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, they got the pressure on Tannehill early, but again, I, I, it goes back to the red zone. It goes back to not putting up seven and only putting up three. They wanted big bodies out there for Henry. They really prepare for him. So, you, so in, in other words, maybe you'd have some speed off the edge. You'd have Epinesa, who was inactive, Boogie Basham, inactive. So maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe that's, that's why. But they, they've got to figure that out. And there's, the trading deadline is week eight. Yeah. But you know I what, would though? like to see. There's plenty of time for that, though, because I, I, I've said it to a lot of the mafia that was that – was, you know, talking on these, uh, you know, on, on, on Facebook and whatnot and on social media about, you know, why'd they go for it on fourth and one? I would rather come out of this with the loss and, and learn from it than walk away after Super Bowl 25 and it was, it was the season was over. Dreams right. were over after that. So this Buffalo Bills team will be great. We just got to give them time to, to gel and get it together because Tennessee was one of those Pittsburgh teams. They just brought it to them defensively and they were schoolyard bullies, hands down. Uh, I want to get Alex Brasky in this conversation here while we're on the subject of this and before we jump into our uh, Bro Seriously stuff. 
So, Alex, look, the Bills needed to be better both on offensive and defensive lines, at least I think. I'd like to get your perspective on it. If you could fix only one side going forward right now, you only get to choose one. What do you fix, the offense or defensive lines? It's no secret the Bills need to improve along the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, but if I could only improve one side of the ball, it would have to be that defensive line. The Bills spent plenty of draft capital in the offseason looking to improve their pass rush, and at times it's shown flashes, but overall it just has not gotten the job done, including last week against Ryan Tannehill, where the Bills' pass rush failed to impact the game at all and allowed Tannehill to sit back there relatively unscathed and, and pick apart the Bills' defense during the second half and ultimately lead Tennessee to a victory. Although Derrick Henry was really the reason for the Titans' victory, Tannehill's ability to sit in that pocket untouched and unbothered really made things easy for the Titans' offense down the stretch. A.J. Epinesa was inactive for that game. It looked like the Bills were trying to come up with a game plan to stop Derrick Henry, and truly it didn't work. And leaving Epinesa and rookie Bookie Basham in the inactive list really made things difficult for the Bills' pass rush this past week. But moving forward, they really need to get things together if they hope to win these games down the stretch against quality divisional leaders such as the Titans. Nick Ficarella, the Pizza Making University. One more question for Alex, now that we're back. But uh, first things first, let's do our Bro Seriously Award. It's the thing that happens in the game or maybe outside the game that makes me shake your head and go, Bro, seriously? What was yours? This not only was outside the game, this happened this past Sunday, the other Mahomes. A different game. A different game, a different time, the other Mahomes. You're not even representing your brother. Oh, not his brother. Or, or is it his wife? Oh, or is it the mom? There's too many. To, it, <laughs> We're not talking. Are they fair game? I need they're to know fair, if they're fair they, game. They are fair game All because, right. look, you're not even representing the team colors. You're wearing an Energizer Bunny t pink hoodie. This is Jackson. We're talking about the brother. Oh, I didn't even want to mention his name because that gives him clout. The whole point is he's <laughs> he's dancing on Sean Taylor's memorial. I and I've, I've seen everybody talk about it. I've seen everybody say, "Oh, they put them in the ropes." This is where they the roped him into a section. Roped the logo was section. there, and his lack of self awareness, he decided he was going to do a dumb dance. By the way. Look, no one's gonna put me put me on a, on a calendar. But who told you you could dance? You are TikTok sad. I give it a D minus. I give it a forty five, and you can't dance to it. Since you said his name, it's gonna be like Voldemort. Jackson Mahomes, <laughs> do yourself a favor. Get a time machine. Go back. Get yourself a copy of Darren's dance grooves. So you know and what? Just stay off the field. Uh, yeah. Seriously, bro. And Renegade. stop dumping water bottles on fans who you don't like their. Or opinions. seriously, little bro. Yes, little bro. Little bro. He was doing the coattail shuffle. I hear all the kids are into it right now. <laughs> They're all learning it. Yeah. Big toxic, man. My <laughs> Nice. Uh, when, when you talk about my bro seriously, I'm going to go back to the officials, but not for what you think I would go to the officials for. It wasn't for bad calls, because I think they do tend to go both ways in a game. And I hate to make that the excuse. I want to go to him for how long does it take you to make a decision? How many times were even the announcers going, are we going to get a, a decision here, guys? They were huddled up. They were talking to each other, conferring. And then this guy's got an opinion. This and that. It's like, it's supposed to move the game along. I mean, they, they, the indecision with all the tools they have nowadays, and they don't know whether to, you know what, or wind their watch. I mean, come on. Make a call. Move on. Look, man, it's no secret that we were basically watching an LD, LTD concert with all the holding on that was going on there. <laughs> like, they literally watched the that big 70-yard run, 70-plus yard by Henry, null and void. I mean, I'm not saying that as, as a Buffalo Bills fan. I'm saying that as somebody that watched two holding calls happen right in front of everybody, and the officials didn't call it. The officials didn't call it probably because it was it, it was happening so fast. It was a bang-bang play, and it was behind the play. So they may not have seen it because they're watching what's happening <clears throat> with the flow of the play. In real time, it's it, those are judgment calls, and you, they're hard to go back and like look at. By the same token, you know what I mean? It's, you, know, the, you got the kickoff return. There was the, that call there and stuff. I mean, but at the end of the day... It is what it is. You got to score more points. And so, you know what I mean? The referees can't control the eight points that we left on the field or that the Bills left on the field. Now I'm saying we. Now you got me doing we. The eight points. We got got fans first. Right? We're fans first. <laughs> the eight points that at the beginning of the game, they should have got touchdowns instead of field goals, especially off that pick. 
you know, that's the difference in the ball game. Then the, then the penalties don't matter. They hey, don't at matter. At least we didn't say Luan played for us. <laughs> no. What was it? Oh, you're referencing the guy from ESPN? <laughs> yeah, man. You gotta let people know these references so they know what they're talking about. The guy from ESPN. It was all over who the place. Who was that guy? I don't even know who he was. It was but, uh, Broussard, I want to say, but he, I, it's one He of said Taylor Juan played for Buffalo when he was doing it. So he, and, he got a couple things wrong, so people And that might have made the difference in Josh Allen getting us that, that game win. So He messaged me like, bro, we never make mistakes like that on the show. I'm like, and getting back to the... You don't watch the replay of the show. For a guy who edits it, you don't watch the replay of the show. <laughs> Mistakes all over the place. Getting back to the Jackson Mahomes thing, okay. I knew something was up because <laughs> this man is a saint. He never complained. And I'm not talking the Drew Brees kind. He never talks about talks smack about anybody. I can honestly tell you that. But if I get a little blip on my messenger on, on Sunday and I see a, a video of Jackson Mahomes dancing... I know it's fair game. I want you to be tweaked about the right <laughs> things. You know what I mean? Because, like, he doesn't love TikTok. I found all the good stuff on TikTok, and he just thinks it's dancing videos. Well, guess what? I found the worst dancing video ever by, 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 by uh, Nepotism Central. So I had to pass it along to him and let him know about it. Go so, back to the privilege cheap, cheap seats like MC Hammer had to. <laughs> Let's get Alex in on this because I got a question now. We know about the problem I brought up on offensive and defensive. We talked about, you know, you know, is there anything else the Bills could use right now? They don't have necessarily have a big name back. Or somebody that's big that could help them out. So, Alex, with the trading deadline now in week eight instead of week six like it was, do you think the Bills go out and get anything? And if they do, what do they go get? Following the Titans game in my five takeaways column available at thedailynewsonline.com, I wrote that it may behoove the Bills to go out and find a pass rusher on the trade market before the deadline. And I think that's exactly what Brandon Bean has to do. The Bills have a young and up and coming pass rush working for them, but they really don't have that one signature talent up front that can get after the quarterback on any given play. And I believe that is what's missing from this Bills defense that has performed near the top of the league thus far this season. Jerry Hughes is getting older. Mario Addison has really been a non-factor in the pass rush this season. And the Bills are just without that one dominant player up front. And if Brandon Bean can go out and address that need before the trade deadline, I think that would be big for the Bills. Choose a school where the arts come alive, where science and technology thrive, to create something extraordinary. No matter which path you choose, GCC gives you the tools to start your next journey. Because when you choose GCC, your time is now. So going forward, we don't have a game this upcoming week to talk about with the bye week. So next week we'll come back and you can sleep. You can finally sleep. Thank goodness. We could we could chop up their upcoming game against the Dolphins now that they'll have Tua Tunga Bailoa back, we'll, and we'll we'll talk about what that means. But we'll shelve it for next week. Let's talk about real quick looking at the schedule going forward. I want to take you back to last year going into the bye week. A hail mary pass against the Cardinals. The Bills went in a uh, loss. They, they took a loss they shouldn't have taken, but. They took that loss into the bye week, came back, and did not lose again until the AFC Championship game. So here's an opportunity, and I think it will be an opportunity. This team does learn from stuff that happens and, and adversity. I think they're going to come back on a mission. You look at the schedule coming up, and if you've got it up here on the screen, we can take a look at it here. But um, they're coming back to Miami on Halloween. Jacksonville's next. Then they're at the Jets. Then they've got Indy at home. Then they go on the road to New Orleans, which you never know what you're going to get week to week with them, but for the most part, right. I, I can make a prediction. Then night. New England is going to be uh, happening on Monday Night Football at home. And then Tampa Bay coming up December 12th, and that's in, in Tampa Bay. going to be a tough game there. You know, that could that could be very well Tampa be an L. Tampa Bay is one of those smash mouth teams just like the Ravens will be, just like Pittsburgh was and just like Tennessee was. Buffalo has to be ready. The road to the Super Bowl goes through Buccaneers territory. Before you get to that Tampa Bay game, there's a chance right there, another six wins, so that gets you to 10. And and maybe, at, if at the worst, Tampa Bay's another loss. You're 10-3 and three right now. I said the Bills are going to be 12-5 and five this season. they got a chance to be better be better than that. They'll have Tampa Bay. Then they've got Carolina on a game that, you know, day and time to be determined in Week 15. And then New England. They're at New England. And then they got Atlanta and the Jets to finish out the season. There's no reason why they couldn't be, if they do everything right, be 15-2 and two or 14-3. and three. It could still be that way. It's losses like this that may help them redefine who they are and say we got to work on A, B, and C. You know what I mean? You got to meet. You got to meet the best in the conference to know where you are in the conference, and they got to keep winning. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully they keep winning. Some of these other conference opponents punch each other out. The Titans play the Chiefs this week. 
I, I can't believe I'm going to be rooting for Kansas City, but for the sake of the conference, I am. I can't root for Kansas City. I can't. I, well, Against Tennessee, we need them because they got a game in it. They got to get half game. They got the tiebreaker over us right now. I want. I, I need a Kansas City win. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. I need the defense. To I stop. can't let it be personal against Mahomes. Although I, gotta, I can't picture Kansas City's defense the way it is stopping Henry right now. Not without not without baseball bats and some chains. Look, I, Henry. Uh, Buffalo proved they could stop Henry in open field. I mean, that I, I saw. I Other than that long run, they have over four games. They literally have held him like sixty or fifty yards each of those four games. Who stopped him on on, the, on that train run that he was pulling some technical type moves? It was uh, was it, it was Hyde, Micah Hyde. Micah, I thought it was Micah Hyde. I was I was just like. Please let his shoulder be okay. Please let his shoulder be okay. Please let his shoulder be oh, okay. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was definitely. I mean, we all held our breath when when Henry got in open field. But I think what it comes down to is going forward. Going forward, you they lost to Pittsburgh. They lost to smash mouth football teams. I mean, I, I hate to use that term, but they lost to physical, intimidating football teams. I don't think they're they're weak. They just have deficiencies within the line. I don't think it's the, the team's not tough. I think they're very tough. That team is growing together, and and I I said this. I said I would say this before the show. Buffalo is going to be all right, hands down. I, I think we got it. Buffalo's got to get through. The Tampa Bay game. That's the one game I'm worried about. I know we could, New England might be surprising on a Monday night. You never know. But it's it's the teams like Tampa Bay that you might meet in the Super Bowl, and the teams like the Titans you might meet in the playoffs is where you need to build yourself around and know that you can win these games. Good teams stumble. Think about the Patriots back back you know when the Bills waxed them thirty one nothing back in 0-2 or whatever that was, and they went on to win the Super Bowl. You gave you me know, full stats of that. That, 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 that <laughs> is that is that is how it happens sometimes. And you know what? Monday night wasn't a disaster. They played another good team and almost won it. And almost won it despite all of it. So you have to be, keep it in perspective. We could be upset about that loss, but it was an amazing game. It was a learning experience, and it was not the end of the season. So that's where we stand with things. So you're sort of getting two shows truncated in part, separate parts because this is bye week. We're going to just uh, relax. I'm gonna watch TV on three screens like I usually do at home. Oh, I usually that's got a great thing. Great <laughs> and thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. And we're gonna come back next week, next Thursday, and we'll break down the Miami game and talk about it because the dynamics do change. You know, just because the Bills won 35 nothing last time, I'm predicting a closer game this time with Tunga Vailoa. But we'll get into that and we'll talk about that. And uh, Dawson Knox, if you somehow see this, rest that hand, bro. Stimulate, get that stim, get with the ice, do whatever they're asking you to do. Just be ready to come back. We need that passing arm. That's Look, all I'm trying to say. A shout out to our sponsor. Genesee Community College. Yes. Buffalo needs to go to school this week. They need to make sure they go back. They, they, <laughs> they, read, the, they read the film. They, they watch the film. They watch these games. The games they lost, they need to look at that. They need to learn from that because fact of the matter is, you're coming back. You're playing a Miami team that's hungry to get even with you. Oh, wait a minute. And you said hungry. So I'll put Ficarella's in there as our other sponsor then. It's it's time to eat up and get yourself a game time fix this weekend. The Bills aren't playing, so your stomach will be nice and settled. So go grab a za. Uh, that is it for the Buffalo No Huddle. I am Jimmy Jam from CJ Country. Morning 6 to 10. Please listen because macaroni and cheese costs money. He's Mark Tillery from the Batavia Daily News, executive producer of this show. We'll see you next week. And as always, go Bills.